Hello, my name's Michael Nolan and I'm pleased to introduce you to Victoria Dixon. Victoria is one of only five registered hearing aid dispensers who are also qualified trainers in a new skill set called primary ear care or the removal of ear wax. And I've asked Victoria along today to talk to us about the benefits of primary ear care, particularly for hearing aid users, what's involved, what the kit that they use uh, comprises, and later on in another video we'll see it actually happening on my ears, so hopefully that will be quite enlightening. So Victoria, thank you for coming along. My pleasure. And um, perhaps you could say a little bit to begin with about some of the different ways that people in the United Kingdom remove earwax from their ears both as an individual doing it themselves and obviously where you can get professional help. But what about starting off with what we as individuals tend to do and things we should do and we shouldn't do? Patients tend to use these very often, uh, cotton buds, and these actually are quite dangerous. Cleaning the outer part of your ear is very good with these, but lots of patients push them very deep into the ear and actually in fact push the wax further down the ear canal. Right. Um, that is a big problem. So one of the adages I've always heard when I've visited the audiologist is never put anything smaller than your, your elbow. elbow. Absolutely right. And that right. would be a good guide would That it? is. Okay. Another so what, Victoria, what, 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 I know you've, you're really excited about this skill set. What, um, what makes your group, the um, British Society of Hearing Aid Audiologists, why have you chosen this approach against other approaches that can be used to do this job? The British Society of Hearing Aid Audiologists decided on dry removal and irrigation as a very much gentler and, and less um, traumatic method of removing wax because we've all heard about stories of people having their ears syringed and very long syringes being used to um, put water into people's yeah. ears under a great deal of pressure and um, there's been quite a lot of damage that has been done by using syringes which has been a traditional method for a very long time. Yeah, And this service that you offer, you can have that done in the high streets in in the hearing aid centres. That's absolutely correct. The High Street um, now will be the place that for a registered hearing aid audiologist will be able to provide this type of service on an appointment basis and there will be no need to go through to their doctor or the practice nurse to have this, this procedure completed. Brilliant. And I, I believe that uh, wax is two problems really. One, it can cause a loss of hearing if absolutely. it's really bad but also for hearing aid wearers, it often causes the aids to break down. So doing things about wax has many benefits, doesn't it? It certainly does for <coughs> the hearing aid audiologist because it keeps the patient um, having, being able to use their hearing aid constantly. And as you quite rightly say, the breakdown because of ingress of wax is much more reduced. And it keeps them wearing their hearing aid then as I say, a lot longer. So, tell us a little bit about the stuff you use, Victoria, and what we're likely to see when we come and visit you in a clinic or one of the Ascent Hearing Care audiologists who you've trained to do this job. The, the, the setup will be very, very similar to this. And this is the irrigator. It will have a reservoir of warm water in, and this will um, allow the uh, clinician just to use a, um, a small amount of water um, through the lance and as you'll be able to see and that will be That's body nice. temperature yeah, water little pulses in it. absolutely um, but very much more delicate than the traditional um, syringing process of, um, of what would have in a, a practice Right, and what are these devices we've got on here? We have um, a Jobson Horn probe which has a small ring end oh, to yeah. the probe. That just actually helps to loosen the wax from the ear canal. Right. Uh, Henkel forceps, um, these are very tiny forceps with just a, a jaw um, at the end, as you oh, can yeah. see. Oh yeah, they don't hurt um, at all. 
those are for actually taking larger pieces of uh, debris the and lifting out of the ear. Yeah, and I notice you, you, you use obviously a light so you can see what you're doing. The, the clinician will always wear a, a, a very sharp um, bright headlamp. Um, this just enables them to see in the ear canal and um, make sure that their vision is very clear. Okay, and what's this stuff here, Victoria? This is ear oil. This is, this is very useful. It's um, an olive oil um, liquid um, in a metered spray and that spray will actually uh, coat the whole of the ear canal and it actually helps to soften wax. So it's measured, it's a measured dose. It is a measured dose. Because a lot of the that. time you get the droppers and it all runs down. And uh, people get it in it down. So that, you don't get that problem. Absolutely. And where, Absolutely. where do you buy that stuff? You can get this, um, you can get this on the high street from any Ascent Hearing Centre. Oh, they wow. have that um, uh, uh, as an over-the-counter product. Right. And yeah. just one thing I was just thinking about. When you're squirting this water in my ear, yes. what happens to the water? Where does uh, it go? That we get the, the, the patient, if you like, I can demonstrate, okay. to hold the tank, um, this newt's tank, just underneath the oh, ear, right. and any water and debris will go into the tank. Collects in Absolutely. Here. That's yes. very good. Yes. So, thank you very much. So that's pretty well a good summary, isn't it, of that's what we're likely to see in uh, in primary ear care through the British Society of Hearing Aid Audiologists. That's correct. What sort of time would it take to have your ears cleaned? It'll depend on the severity of wax, but it could take between 15 minutes and, and 30 minutes. Right, okay. And is there a charge made? Um, some centres do charge, yes, um, and some centres, if you're a, a, a patient of theirs, may offer it as a complimentary service. Thank you. Thank you very much for visiting us today. My pleasure.